Good morning. In this video, we are going to explore the dark prehistory of criminology. Actually, we're going to look at a couple, four um, ways that people in the past have explained why people engage in aberrant behavior. Now, in video two for this unit, we talked about crimes that are mala in se, mala prohibita, and then we talked a little bit about Marxist theory of how we um, create our criminal codes. So remember when we say aberrant, we mean aberrant to that particular culture. Now for mala in se crimes, those behaviors are aberrant throughout cultures historically. Um, with some exceptions, uh, for example, uh, in cultures that believe in sacrificing an innocent person to the gods uh, because the gods want perfection, um, the sacrifice itself would not be considered murder. We're going to talk about the prehistory of criminology or the pre scientific or non scientific theories of why people engage in behaviors that society deems aberrant either because those behaviors are evil in and of themselves, such as murder, or because society has determined that those acts should be evil, such as marijuana use. So let's get to it. The first one, demon possession. I have the devil in me. I have the devil. Oh, no, I'm not going to do that. Okay, so here we have a painting from the Renaissance. Um, we have uh, a photograph uh, of Anthony Hopkins in a film. We have um, a screenshot of a, um, uh, of a news article that's recent on demon possession. But the belief was that when people did bad things, they were possessed of the devil. The devil was actually inside of them. It wasn't that person doing it. It was the devil controlling their bodies. So that's demon possession. Now, that's, an, that's a, a very, very old, old uh, theory. Um, it is non-scientific because there has been no science to demonstrate that demon possession happens. Okay. All right. The next one is similar to demon possession. It's the devil made me do it. The I was tempted to do it theory. Now, this is Josh Duggar of 19 Kids and Counting. When um, it came out in the news that as a teenager, he had molested um, um, his, his sisters, uh, not all of them, but some of his sisters, um, his people explained that that isn't really who uh, Josh Duggar is. No, he was tempted by the devil. He was led astray. So he never would have done this on his own. But there was a temptation. And, and so we can't hold him accountable because he's not to blame that the devil came and tempted him because he was the assumption it seemed like to me, and this is my interpretation, but the assumption it seemed like to me was he's such a strong Christian fighting for God that the devil did this to him on purpose, and this isn't really who he is. Well, that's neither here nor there when it comes to the criminal justice system. We have to protect society from those who would hurt those individuals. The next one, witchcraft. So witchcraft you know, came from the time of the Salem witch trials. And even before that, there's actually a book called the Malleus Maleficarum, um, which is uh, a manual for those who would detect, try, and punish witches. Uh, I actually have a copy of it in my library. So the idea isn't that these individuals are possessed by the devil. It's not that they're tempted by the devil. It's that they are partners of the devil. They are in cahoots with the devil of their own accord. So they are witches that, who, with whom the devil has imbued magical powers. 
Um, so they are in cahoots with the devil. And that's why people do things that are aberrant to society because that woman over there is a witch and she made me do it with her magical powers. Um, pretty convenient way of getting away with bad behavior, if you ask me. But now, the, the, the witch hunts were a lot more complicated than that. But that's one of the areas. Now, do witch hunts happen today? Yes. In fact, the um, um, uh, images on the right-hand side of this slide are, are from Sean Penn's documentary, Witch Hunt. Hey, the prosecutors believe these folks were in cahoots with the devil. They were partners with the devil, worshiping the devil in this pedophile Satan worshiping ring. They dug up fields all over Kern County, California. They never found not even a chip of a bone. But they proceeded anyway, and they convicted multiple people, multiple, multiple people that should not have been convicted um, of things um, 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 that that they didn't do and they were all later exonerated but this was ha, start began in the 80s and going into the 90s it was the satanic panic all sorts of things but anyway and then the last one is the full moon so there was a belief that the full moon had magical powers even today if you talk to folks that work in emergency rooms in psychiatric hospitals even police they will swear some of them will not all of them but some of them will swear that a full moon causes all this bad behavior there have actually been studies done and the incidence of those behaviors and admissions to psych hospitals and in emergency room visits things like that the incidence of them is no different from a full moon a waning crescent a waxing crescent a waning gibbous a waxing gibbous, no different. So scientifically speaking, it does not pan out. So see, this one we can research. The other ones we can't research because they involve things that are not observable. The full moon, the, the stage of the moon is observable. So that we can research and we can debunk that easy with science. The others are not scientific theories. They cannot be observed. So, if we reach back into ancient time, all four of those are theories that they would have used to explain why people engage in criminal acts, aberrant behaviors. All four of those are still sometimes used today. In this class, we're going to be studying the scientific theories, meaning that at least they are observable. Now, maybe not all of the variables that are identified are observable, but the ones that we're going to be studying are the theories that at least can have some scientific inquiry applied to them. Now, this is an undergraduate class, a junior level class. We're going to be focused more on you learning the theory itself than going further and looking at all of the scientific research that has been done in the decades since each theory has been proposed. For some, it might be five, six, seven, eight, even 10 or more decades. For other theories, it's going to be one, maybe two or three, maybe not even a full decade. But we're not going to go into all of that research because in this class, we want you to understand the theories themselves to begin with. We'll see you next video.